kissing her with all me arm. But they don't give a monkey's down at the HSS And they've gone and I'll be pension for a start So it won't be very long before I'm by her side Cos I'll probably starve to death, that's what I'll do For richer or poor, I'm bloody I'm poor, poor and that's a fact, fact. That's cos in sickness and in health I said I'll do It's all very well you saying that's a council flat and it's your prerogative to stick who you like into it. I didn't say that. Not in so many words. No, if you'd listen to what I said. You listen to me. What I said, Mr. I Lawrence. know what you say. You won't listen. You listen to me for a change. I've done nothing else. Look, I'm the one who has to live downstairs to whoever you want to bung in upstairs. We're not bunging people upstairs, Mr. Garnet. We're trying to house them as judiciously and harmoniously as possible. And we try very hard to take everyone's likes and dislikes into account. So you stick her upstairs above me? What, Mrs. Hollingbury? No, Mickey Mouse! <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mrs. Hollingbury, Mrs. Poison Ivy, Mrs. Bloody Eva Braun. <laughs> Come round, you, you move people in, you never a word. Was that judicious? Was that harmonious? If you want the truth, Mr. Garnet, Mrs. Hollingbury came round here and pleaded for a move. She sat in that chair and she cried. Oh, yeah. She said she'd put an end to herself if she had to live under your roof a moment longer. Well, that's lies, that is, isn't it? Well, I'm not telling lies. No, but she is. She's, she's a liar. I've done everything for that woman, I have. I'm the one who ought to sit in this chair and cry if anyone should. <laughs> I'm the one to do away with ourselves. That would be a solution. <laughs> she's made my life a misery, she has. Look, I'm easy to get along with. Far too easy, if the truth be told. I'm, I'm a good neighbour, you ask anyone. That's not quite the impression Mrs Hollingbury gives. Yeah, well, I'm the one they all like, not her. Bloody cow. <laughs> <laughs> she wouldn't, wouldn't do hands turn for me, she wouldn't. Wouldn't boil a kettle, cook a breakfast, make a meal, do any washing or scrubbing, no, not her. Not for me, she wouldn't. Supposed to be a Christian, supposed to be a good neighbour. Oh, never mind, I'd be glad to be rid of her. But she's not very happy either. Happy? She don't know how to be happy, that one. And in future, missus, if you ask people before you move other people in above them... What? You let them interview them, give them the once-over. Mr Garnet, when the council gives somebody, anybody, the tenancy of a council flat, it becomes their home. They pay the rent, it's got nothing to do with anybody else. Yeah. All we ask is that they be good neighbours. Yeah, well, it's all very well you banging people into flats wherever you fancy. Well, what about us? who has to live underneath them with all their bad habits and behaviour. We're a decent neighbour, we are, we'll try to be. And if you lot was a bit more fussy about who you let your flats to, we could be even better neighbour and not have to live amongst thieves and criminals beyond the reach of law and order. Oh, really, Mr Garnet, nobody's beyond the reach of law and order. Oh, ain't they? Oh, ain't they, missus? You take a stroll down our street sometime. God, blimey, there's enough of them down there. All right, I mean, your coppers might catch a few of them and bung them into prison. But what good does that do? Your prison's no hardship for your criminal. It's only the decent, honest person who suffers in prison. I mean, prison's no more than home for home for your average criminal. It's better. More like a social club for him, it is. <laughs> He's in there with all his mates, isn't he? Got three square meals a day, snooker, television, no rent to pay. I mean, most of them ain't got that at home. I ain't got that at home. I thought you said yours was a respectable street, Mr Garner. I thought it was, and so it used to be, before you lot started moving any old Tom, Dick or Harry into it. Look, if, if you was a bit more particular and come to us, the decent, honest people in the street, and asked us who we want living next door to us, it might still be a respectable street. Oh. I see. You would like to establish a vetting committee. But why not? Why shouldn't decent, respectable people be able to keep themselves to themselves and not have to live amongst thieves and criminals and bloody muggers? Well, I quite agree with you, Mr Garnet. But none of us can be altogether sure who our neighbours are. Don't talk daft, Mrs. Oh, <laughs> Your upper classes, your middle classes, all of them with a few bob. They know who their neighbours are. At least they know it's someone with a few bob like themselves. Not someone who's peeping in through the window, waiting for them to go out so they can nip in and rob them. They've got neighbours they can trust. Not neighbours who are waiting outside to mug them the minute they sit foot outside the front door. The middle classes get mugged too, Mr Garnet. Not by their neighbours, they don't. <laughs> They've got the bloody muggers living next door to them. Love thy neighbour, the good Lord Jesus said. Well, I'll tell you this, missus. 
He wouldn't have said that, God rest his soul, if he had to live where I have to live. <laughs> if he had to live next door to the rubbish I have to live next door to, he would have said, watch thy neighbours. <laughs> Keep an eye on thy neighbours. <laughs> Find out who they are and what they're up to before you even pass the time of day with your neighbours. <laughs> well, you paint a sorry picture of your street, I Yeah, well, say. your Picasso and your Van Gogh and the other one, the two loose. The little cripple one, Lord Trek, him. <laughs> and if had all dropped a paint, a better one, I could tell you. Anyway, we're not putting any Tom, Dick or Harry above you. Mrs Hollingbury is a nice, clean, respectable woman. Even you must admit that. I ain't said nothing against Mrs Hollingbury. She's the one who come down here complaining about me. And you are the one who told her I was a disgusting pig and not fit to live in the same house with her. I didn't say that. Oh, I see. So Mrs Hollingbury's a liar too now, is she? I haven't seen Mrs Hollingbury for months. You encourage her to come down here telling tales about me? I've been very good to that woman, I have. And what about her next door? Which side? Both sides. Ah, oh, well, no. <laughs> They have complained about you. Which side? Both sides. <laughs> They're each as bad as the other, that one. I mean, always knocking on my wall, that one is. Which one? Both of them, it comes to that. As <laughs> soon as I turn my telly on, knock, 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 bang, 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 complaining because it's too loud. Too loud? I'm lucky the bloody thing works at all. <laughs> and that's the crux of it, isn't it? That's what's got up her nose. Who? Mrs. Ollenberry. Because I turned off neighbours. <laughs> it's my telly, isn't it? She's sitting in my flat. Complaining because I've turned off my telly. I've got them two witches either side of me, bang, bang, knocking on the bloody wall. Complaining because I've turned the bloody set on. And she's sitting there screaming blue bloody murders as I turn it off. <laughs> I mean, it's my telly, isn't it? I think I am entitled to decide which programme we watch. I mean, that's not asking too much, is it? No. You don't entitle her to come down here complaining about me and asking you to get her a new flat because you've told her that I'm a disgusting pig and not fit to live in the same house with. Mrs Hollingbury has not been down here complaining and I certainly never told her you were a pig. Although, I must say... <laughs> no, she told me she'd been down here and you said... I never did. You just said she sat here in this chair and cried. Oh, that was a long time ago. Last time I saw Mrs Hollingbury, she said you were getting along quite well. Well, she's a liar. <laughs> Did you say a long time ago? Yes. You mean she ain't been down here today complaining about me? Well, Mrs Hollingbury hasn't been down here today. And you never told her that I was a pig and not fit to live with? No. Lying bloody bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she told me that you was going to get her a new flat in a better neighbourhood and move other people in above me more my own sort. And I can understand your alarm, Mr Garnet. <laughs> it's all pleasant for you. <laughs> I haven't seen her. We haven't told her anything. Right. Mr Garnet? What? You've forgotten your stick. What you doing? That's my telly. What for you like neighbours? Yes. When I turn it on. <laughs> I can bang. I can bang too. And you. I can bloody more bang. I bloody Millwall hooligans. <laughs> <laughs> they don't bang when you're out. I've been sitting there all afternoon watching that, and nobody's bothered to bang. But as soon as you come in, they start. You've been watching my telly all afternoon, using my licence, burning my electric. I put money in the box. Tuppence. <laughs> Wasn't worth tuppence what I've had to sit through. <laughs> There's been nothing on there at all this afternoon. Not until now. But don't make it no cheaper, my dear, because there's nothing on there to your liking. <laughs> I don't get a rebate from the BBC because the programmes ain't to my liking. <laughs> and hours and hours of bloody repeats. <laughs> Shows that I've paid for over and over again. <laughs> I should be able to claim money back on repeats or anything else I don't watch. I should have a form to fill in. Seen that, seen that, that's rubbish, that's crap. <laughs> I should, I should be able to claim back on what I don't watch. Shush! Shush! 
Sus! Don't do that to sus me! This is my flat, and that is my telly, and that is my tell you're seeing in. You're a difficult man to try and get along with. Well, stay upstairs in your own flat, then. Go on. I, I, I shall have my own flat soon, somewhere else. Yeah, somewhere away from you. Oh, yeah. Is that what the lady at the council office has told you, my dear? Yes. Somewhere smart. Somewhere I can hold my head up. Yes. Well, you can hold your head up here, my dear. This end of the street's all right, apart from then next door. <laughs> and, uh, when did this council lady tell you you was getting this new flat of yours, eh? Soon. Oh, yeah. Told you that this morning, did she? When yes. you saw her? Yes. I should cross yourself, my dear, if I were you. Eh? Hey? Ace, King, Queen, Jack, you know? <laughs> If you're going to tell lies, my dear, it's safer to cross yourself. It appeases the Lord. You should know that. You're a Catholic. I don't tell lies. I've got more respect for my maker. Mm. Well, let's hope for your sake that your maker wasn't up the council offices for anything this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard what that council lady had to say to me. What council lady? Never mind. Your maker's probably got his little black book out on you already. Well, he's everywhere, according to your religion, isn't he? And if he was at the council offices this afternoon and heard what I heard that lady say to me, you're in for a lot of Hail Marys, my dear. <laughs> Him and that parish priest of yours will have you on your knees for hours. You see, days, probably weeks, and serves you bloody well right. What lady? The lady that you were supposed to have seen. The lady who was supposed to have told you that I was a disgusting pig and not fit to live in the same house with. You are a pig. Oh, yeah. That may be, my dear, but the council lady didn't tell you that I was, did she? No. And when you confess all of that to the father, I hope he has you on your knees till Christmas. <laughs> 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 I tell you, it's a bugger this getting old, Arthur. I tell people, I say, before you sneer at me, I am your future. I'm what you've got coming to you. Never mind looking after yourself. Never mind not smoking, not drinking, doing your exercises. Look at me, I tell them. I'm what's in store for you. Loneliness on the old age pension. That's where you're heading. <laughs> that wipes a smile off the faces. Look at this. Reduced to sipping it now, I am. <laughs> I've got to learn to make it last. I used to bet I'd down three or four pints of this once, just for starters. Just a thought of sharp on your appetite. I used to bet I thought to get drunk three or four times a week once, Arthur. Not anymore. Couldn't even afford to get drunk Christmas this year. You was drunk last Friday, though, wasn't you? <laughs> no. I had a few, I think. <laughs> Not drunk, though. Not what I call drunk, anyway. You fell over in here. <laughs> well, that's my hip, innit? Oh. <laughs> Got this artificial hip now, aren't I? Mm. Still learning to use it. See, it's a bit of a miracle, really, the way I still get about it, I suppose. But I won't give in to it, Arthur, no. will I? No. See, that's why I'm different to the others. That's what our upstairs was saying only the other day. Not Mrs. Ollenbury? Yeah. yeah. Your hero with that leg, she said. You deserve a medal, she said. You sit there, you never complain, never a word passes your lips about what you must have called from, she said. <laughs> well, you're all right now, though, ain't you, Alf? I mean, now you've had the operation. Well, I should be. I should mm. be by rights, Arthur, but... Yeah. Well, it's a strange thing, though. Yeah. I can still feel that missing bone. It's a thing people say, you know. You hear people say that have lost a leg. You hear them say how they can feel that missing leg that ain't there all their lives. But you ain't lost a leg. <laughs> you know, I've lost a hip, and that is a part of your leg, isn't it? And I can feel it still. I can still feel that missing hip. But I don't see that half. I mean, the old point of the operation was to take away that hip. I know that, Arthur, but I can still feel it. But they gave you a new it. I know that, <laughs> but I can still feel the old one. So you're still in as much pain now as you was before, then? Worse, I'd say. So what was the point of having the operation? <laughs> That's what I say. Oh, oh. There's a bloody doctors, isn't it? Didn't want to be done out of the money, I suppose. Mm. Ah, well, 
Can't blame them. They've got to earn a living, I suppose. Trouble is, their living off is poking about inside of us. Mm -hmm. I don't want to complain, but... I mean, they've got to practice their medicine, I suppose, but... The way my hip feels some days, the bloke what done it could have done with a lot more practice, if you ask me. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, that's giving me jit, that is. God's yeah. truth, that's been playing me up something rotten all day. Oh, dear. Well, I don't want to complain. No, no, no. As <laughs> long as some good comes out of it for someone. Mm. See, your surgeon's mistakes are for that kills thousands of people in this country every year. But you never hear about their mistakes. And do you know for why? No. Because they bury them, that's why. <laughs> I mean, why do you think a surgeon wears a mask? So he can't be identified, that's why. <laughs> well, uh, apart from your hip, your fit health. I mean, that's something, isn't it? Well, I've survived their knives. Yeah, I suppose yeah. I can't complain I'm fit enough apart from my hip. But I'll tell you something, Arthur. Fit is no good to me unless I've got money. I mean, ill with plenty of money is a bloody sight better than fit without any at my age, I'm you. <laughs> Don't you value your health? Well, I value money more. <laughs> better than anything else, that is. Better than love. Love? Yeah. <laughs> love? What yeah. good is love to you if you're cold and hungry? <laughs> anyway, you can get all the love you need if you've got money. Well, you're talking about sex. I mean, you can buy sex for money. You can't buy love, though. Wrong, Arthur, huh? wrong. <laughs> If you've got money, I'll guarantee if you're a millionaire, I'll wager you. You'd have more of your family and all sorts of other people hanging around you, saying how much they love you, more than you want to put up with, to be honest. Well, saying they love you, maybe, but really loving you, that's another matter. Well, saying they love you or really loving you, what's the difference? As long as they act like they're loving you and make enough fuss for you, what's it matter? <laughs> you can never tell if people really love you. You can only go by what they say or do. Unless you've got no money. Unless you're stony, broke and poor as a bleating church mouse like I am. <laughs> That's when you can tell whether people really love you or not. I mean, why do you think I'm so bloody lonely? So you think that nobody loves you for yourself? Not what I call love, no. Of course there is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty. Name one. Go on, name one. Oh, don't rush me. Oh, let me think. <laughs> My else, God rest her soul, she loved me. She thought the world of me, she did. I was her world. Mrs. Ollenbury. Mrs. Ollenbury? Well, you could be in for a big surprise there. I could. Yeah, I mean, you play your cards right with her, you'd be on a good thing, then. Yeah, well, I'm pleasant enough, Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble is, with women, I mean, you know, <laughs> you pay them too much attention for you know where you are, they're in love with you. <laughs> they're too keen on us, mm, that's the trouble. Mm, mm, mm. You could do a lot worse than her, you know. Oh, yeah, I could have a lot worse than her living up above me. I mean, she does keep herself to herself a bit, oh, doesn't she? Oh, yeah. And she's not constantly throwing herself at you, is she? No, no not no, the way no. some might. No, she'll be grateful for that, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's all right. <laughs> Bit thick though. Yeah. <laughs> you can't blame her for that though. No, can you? no, you're right there, Arthur. You're right there. I mean, you can't expect her to be any brighter than she was born to be, eh? <laughs> she does her best though. Yeah, but, you know, if it ain't there, it ain't there, is it? Well, that's right, yeah. yeah. I mean, can't expect the Lord to waste a good brain on the likes of her, can you? <laughs> he knew what he wanted her for. Housewife. Right. <laughs> the weight on man. Right, and I mean, you know, the, she's in pretty good nick. I mean, for her age. She's a bit younger than you, isn't she? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. She's got a few years left in her, all right. Yeah, well, that's not to be sneezed at, you know, cos you ain't getting any younger. And if that hip of yours gets worse, I mean, she'll have the strength to push you about in a wheelchair, won't she? <laughs> that can be very useful. Yeah. Hmm. <coughs> yeah, she needs a man to take her over. Find a use for her. Mm -hmm. Give her a function. Of course, there's always the house. The house? Yeah, I mean, forgetting love for the minute and think about financial gain. See, you're saying how hard up you are, and I've told you before, you, you don't have to love a woman to marry her. You take your upper classes, the aristocracy. I mean, they don't just marry for love, for position, joining their dynasties, putting two fortunes together. You marry Mrs. Ollenbury and you'll be doing the same thing. Using your loaf, putting two pensions together. I mean, you're sitting on a small fortune in that house over there. Fortune? The house. 
You marry Mrs. Ollenbury, and you not only put two pensions together, but instead of two flats, you've got a whole house. And with this loony left council we got here, you could buy that house for 20,000. And that house is worth 120,000. That's 50,000 each. Or, or, you handle her right, that's 100,000 for you. 100,000 pound and a wife that's willing and able. Oh. <laughs> She'd be willing all right. 100,000 pound. All right, Mr Garnet. You're looking cheerful. It looks as if you've come into money. The old black economy going well, is it? Don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come on, Mr Garnet. You must be one of the richest men around here, all them... Uh, Black lads living with you, hey? You must be coining it in rent. Look, <laughs> but don't blame him. Look, I don't charge rent. Oh, come on, Mr Garnet. Will them black boys living in your house? You ain't charging them rent, hey? Well, there's got to be some attraction in it. Have you uh, got a bit, uh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't. <laughs> well, that black boy Winston you live with, he's he definitely... Don't live uh... with, he don't live with me no more, Winston. Mm. I've got his cousin Perry living in, he's not a puffter. All right, all right, look, don't get me wrong. Live and let live, that's what I say. As long as you're all consenting adults. Look, it's got nothing to do yeah. with that, and I don't charge him rent. I mean, it's not a crime these days, is it? Look, I took him in out of goodness of my heart. But it does lower the tone of a respectable street, and that's not nice, is it? Also, it lowers property prices when you want to sell. And that's even worse for us who've got money tied up in our houses. You know? Might be worth about 120,000, probably like that, if we could stop them puffs. <laughs> 100,000 pounds? 100,000 nicker. God, it's the truth. Yeah. I, I was I was just watching your telly. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm in your chair. No, 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 it's all right. You sit there. <laughs> <laughs> I bought I bought some fish and chips. It's only the one piece of cod. <laughs> Dove a bit his place. Oh. What do you mean you brought some for me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's only the one piece of cob, but the place is nice. Oh, I'll get some plates. Which bit would you like? Oh, I don't mind. Yeah, I, I bought a Guinness for you, too. You like a Guinness? Oh, thank you. Right. <laughs> Uh, what would you like? Place or cod? No, you. No. You choose. No, you have what you want. No. You. <laughs> you have what you want. No, you choose. <laughs> no. <laughs> you. Well, I'll tell you what. Right. We'll, bo we'll both have a piece of each. All right. Yeah? Let the prof go down, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go down the council office this morning, you know. I was telling fibs. And, and the woman there didn't say what I said she did. <laughs> and she's not even getting me another flat. And I'm not even looking for one. I'm happy here. Cozy, eh? <laughs> That's nice. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought, you know, candlelight supper. Yeah. Well, a bit cosy, eh? It's very romantic. <laughs> You're very good elf. <laughs> you stop burning my electric in here. <clears throat> What's this thing? New economy drive. <laughs> it's you here. I thought you said he'd gone. Who? You're Winston. That ain't Winston. That's his cousin Pelly. Are you sure? Bonnie, can't you tell the difference? I haven't got my glasses. She can't tell the difference between you. <laughs> no, I don't want to tell the difference between them, thank you. Anyway, I'm sorry if I disturbed anything. Hey? Well, if I spoilt anything that was going on, you know. No, I don't know. I think it's wonderful. Marvellous. You enjoy yourselves. <laughs> Because I am. <laughs> now look what you've done. You've ruined my reputation. I will have to move. No! <laughs> you stop that in there. Come here! Come here! I won't have that in my house, really! It'll get cold. <laughs> <laughs>